a lot. I'm Ranger Caprice and today we will be working on our Alaska badge. Today we will be reading Lucky Hares and Itchy Bears and Other Alaskan Animals, poems by Susan Ewing. Let's hop into it. Brown Bear. Discovering the tracks of a bear can give you quite a little scare. You hope you don't, you hope you do. See the bears ahead of you. If you're careful, if you wish, you'll find your brown bears catching fish or scratching up against a tree to itch their bear behinds with glee. Sea Otter. Imagine munching urchins while floating on your back and conking clams upon your chest. It's wham and then crack. For Otter, it's not awkward to snack or snooze afloat. He bobs upon the ocean waves just like a furry boat. And when it's time to sleep, he rests his wickered head, tucked in with friendly fishes in his seaweed water bed. Raven. Listen to that raven as he swoops high over town, calling to his friends to watch him flip fly upside down. Caw, says one. That's nothing. Want to see me catch a mouse? Caha, another cackles. Race you out to Fido's house. Ka ha ha! They call out back and forth in laughing raven words. You know, of course, that ravens are the smartest of all birds. I like to think I figured out the things that ravens say about their shiny treasures and tomorrow's garbage day. To be a raven flying free would be my dream come true. I'd stretch my wings and whoosh around and show off just for you. Salmon. When you spy a salmon swimming hard upstream, she's had more frights and seen more sights than you could ever dream. She's moved from stream to ocean when she was just a kid. She had to outrun orcas. She dined on squiggly squid. Now with a school of siblings all fighting to get home, she shimmies past a fishing bear and leaps through falls and foam. Nose into the current, she finds the place she knows. She lays her eggs where she was born, and on the story goes. The wolf. Nose licking, tails wagging, paws pawing ears. It's family reunion when Big Wolf appears. Now father and mother and pups in a pack set off in starlight to sniff breeze and track. They pause for a moment in milky moonlight to wonder who else is out hunting tonight. How they sing out, then let silence fall to listen for neighbors returning the call. Moose. You know it's not polite to stare. Still, moose can give you pause. Those skinny legs, those droopy ears, how does he blow that schnoz? But with his legs, he's happy, with his nose content. Moose can walk forever and smell the smallest scent. He can wade in water above his knobby knees, but if a leaf gets up his snoot, watch out, he's gonna sneeze. Caribou. Yoo-hoo, caribou, where are you going now? Is migration like vacation? Excuse me, Mrs. Cow. You spend the winter over there, the summer over here, and have your baby on the way. Is travel your career? Your tiny calf is born to go. It really is quite stunning. Before her birthday's over, she's already off and running. Your little girl is lucky to be born a caribou. Just like the boys, she gets to grow some spiky antlers too. Walrus. I wouldn't kiss a walrus any time or any place, for such a smooch could suck the nose right off my little face. You see, the walrus eating style which seems to work quite well. 
puts tongue and lips to work to vacuum seafood from the shell. Upside down, they feel around for food with whiskered muzzle, nosing clams out of the sand, giving crabs a nuzzle. They use their tusks for other tasks, but let me be quite honest, if I had teeth like that, I'd call my brother's orthodontist. Dragonfly. Mosquito didn't have a chance when Dragonfly asked, shall we dance? She waltzed Mosquito north and south. He jitterbugged into her mouth. Gotcha, dr grinned sly Dragonfly, hovering lightly in the sky. And with a thrum, she whirred away. Who else would like to dance today? Humpback Whale. Humpback leaps at any chance to prove you don't need feet to dance. He pirouettes from sea to air, a splash with wild cetacean flare. His flippers flap like whaley wings or like a maestro's motionings. When spoosh, he dives without a trace. The ocean seems a quiet place. Flying Squirrel. Flying Squirrel runs to the tip of a branch and launches herself into space. She sails down a moonbeam, slips safely past Owl with easy, unflappable grace. Gliding from cedar to spruce on a parachute cape made of soft furry skin. It's nighttime, the right time to be up and at him. It's dark out, her day can begin. Nosing around on the ground, see her skitter, skip, scamper, scurry, and snuffle, working to dig up her most luscious treat, a yummy, plump, mushroomy truffle. Eagle. Smaller birds weave cups of grass entwined with spider thread, but eagles build humongous nests with big old sticks instead. They need such massive structures to hold their giant twins who hunker in the woodsy crib like feathered bowling pins. Octopus. Go on and call him Egghead. He really would be charmed. He's quite a bright invertebrate not dangerous, though armed. Imagine being hugged by first those tentacles, then these, eight rubbery arms around your waist to snuggle in and squeeze. He puckers up his suction cups and clamps them on your skin. And when you try to peel him off, oh, where do you begin? Snowshoe hair. Oh my gosh, I've got to run. Lynx is here to spoil the fun. My feet are built to tread the snow but so are hers. That girl can go. Oh no, she's gaining a spurt of speed. Am I going to be her bunny feed? Zig, zag, dash, I'm past her. Today my furry feet are faster. I never ever want to lose my lucky little running shoes. Frog. Froggy boy, I have to ask ya, what you doing in Alaska? How do you survive the chill? Do you hop south, down to Brazil? No, snowy blanket tucks me in, from froggy feet to froggy chin. And so I'm quite content to doze while all the world around is froze. When spring days come, we groggy frogs crawl out from under soggy bogs, waking up from a winter sleep, a ribic croak, a reap, reap, reap. The end. Thanks for reading along. My question for you is what's your favorite Alaskan animal? Go out and see how many you can find. Thanks for listening.